Welcome back, children. Last time around, we took a look at how we would start a new account, and what we would need to do to level up our new units. You all must be thinking, Papa, now can I go outside and live a happy life? Ha ha ha. No, my child. No time for happiness. There is much more to learn. So let's get right into it. Welcome, to the... Beginner's Guide. Part 2. So once you've acquired the resources to get your character to level 99, as well as leveling up their jobs to level 15, you will get access to their EX jobs. Let's unlock Lightning's EX job, right now. That never gets sold. You will be able to see that your character's main job can now be leveled up further, all the way to job level 25. This will allow your character to reach a maximum level of 120. But raising your character's levels and jobs in this way, isn't just for simple stat increases. You must have noticed this option on your character's screen. Children, let's talk about Abilities just like everything else in this game, things might seem complex, but it's all quite simple. Each node that you see, represents either a stat increase, or an ability, that you can unlock. More nodes become available as you level up your character and their jobs. There is a section of nodes that are locked behind the EX jobs, which allow your character to get their last skills and levels. Anyone who has played Final Fantasy X should be right at home with this system. Once you unlock your skills, you will notice that they all start at level 1, and can be improved all the way to level 20. You might also notice that doing this isn't free, and costs a nice chunk of JP and Gil. In fact, JP is also required to unlock skills in the first place. Let's see how much JP we get when we complete a story quest. Luckily, there is a better way. Over time, you will acquire these JP keys, and they are the main way to get the ridiculous amounts of JP that you need to get, and level up, your skills. You can also acquire items called Overlight, which further increase the JP that we can get from these quests. There are other ways to get even more JP, and we'll talk about a few of these ways a little later. Let's see how much we can get now. I think that's a little more than before. These keys might seem a little hard to come by early on, but eventually you'll have plenty of them. As for which skills you should level up, you probably should just level up all of them, unless your character has some which you never intend to use. Besides the skills which you use in battle, there are also support abilities, and counter abilities. Support abilities give your character passive benefits and boosts, while counter abilities can activate during battles, when certain conditions are met. Support abilities, especially, have the potential to drastically change how your character would work, so you should look into ones your character has, carefully. One other thing I should mention, almost all characters have limit bursts, which are really fancy moves that can change the flow of battle. Leveling up limit bursts require valuable resources, so you should only invest in limit bursts that you value significantly. Well then, now we have a reasonable idea about a character's abilities. But what else can we do to unlock our character's potential? I suppose we should put some gear on them, so let's talk about Equipment In War of the Visions, we have three types of equipment. Weapon, Armor and Accessory. Both weapons and armor have quite a few subtypes, which determine what characters can equip them. Accessories can be equipped by pretty much everyone. Every character has three slots for equipment. We'll talk about the third slot in a bit, as it is a bit unique. As for the other two slots, your character can equip any combination of a weapon, armor and accessory. You might be wondering, how in the world do we acquire all this stuff? Well, there are a couple of ways. 
the primary one is in the far plane. Most weeks, you will see these, high difficulty quests. Clearing these quests give you a chance to acquire a recipe for a specific piece of gear. The harder difficulties give you a better chance for acquiring a recipe. Once you have a single recipe, you can go into the crafting menu, and see what other resources you need to craft that weapon. That sounds pretty easy, right? Well, it is. That is, if you don't care about having the best possible version of that gear. You see, most pieces of equipment have passive boosts, which can be quite important, from a competitive point of view. But in order to get the best version, you don't need just one or two recipes. Ha ha ha. No. You need 63. What? What the fuck? Not only that, the other resources needed to craft the weapon also increase drastically. Oh, but there's more. Some weapons have the potential to be improved even further, to a plus 6 version. You don't need too many more resources to do that, but it's still an effort. Keep in mind that there are no differences in the stats, between a plus 5 version and plus 0 version. The difference lies in the passive boosts, alone. Plus 6 versions do have higher stats, but then they do demand an effort to acquire them. Here are a couple of other things I should mention. There are some unique pieces of equipment, which you can only acquire a single time. Some of them have the ability to be improved to A plus 1 version, but they require the same effort as the one required to go from A plus 5 version to plus 6. Besides the available equipment quests, the Far Plane archives also allow you to access most of the past equipment quests, and they can be unlocked, for free, once a day. Also, not all gear recipes are available in the Far Plane. Every now and then, we get raid events, which allow you to acquire valuable pieces of equipment. The Trials of Reckoning event, like the one going on right now, can also be a source for some great gear. When you finally get to crafting your gear, you will notice that they have types. The different types can significantly alter the stats of the equipment. There is a great website which you can use to check the stats of each type beforehand, so you know exactly what you're getting. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Alright, so you crafted your shiny new piece of equipment. Time to actually use it, right? Ha ha. No. We have to first level it up, and max it out. When you first check your newly crafted equipment, you'll notice that it has a level cap of 10. We have to pump those numbers up. What you need to do, is to awaken your equipment, which will raise the level cap to the maximum, which is level 50. After that, you have to level up your new gear, to max out its stats. Just leveling it up won't guarantee that you will get max stats, however. The stats for each gear can have different rates by which they can increase. The website I mentioned earlier will, again, help in this regard. You can increase the chances of those stats to increase by using items, known as seals. The best practice is to level up your equipment in increments of 10 levels. And checking how things line up with the website, where you would do the same. Every now and then, we get equipment training campaigns, during which rates for stat increases go up. You can get the same benefit by purchasing the equipment training pack, if you are a big money baby. But eventually, with enough persistence, you will be able to max out your gear, which will feel great, and, finally, be able to use it. If you end up missing a few stats, you can use items, called, hammers, to add those stats afterwards. If things go horribly wrong, you can try to level things up from the beginning, too. Although you lose the resources used to level it up before. So is getting the high-end versions of gear, worth it? You see, here is the thing. The grind for the best versions can be daunting, especially for new players. In fact, it can be pretty easy to feel burned out, if you grind too much. If you only wish to play the game super casually, then you don't need to do all this grinding. But, if you do want to be competitive, then you would need to put on your farming underwear, and get the best possible versions of your desired gear. But what about the third slot that I didn't elaborate on before? Well, that is a slot only for a piece of equipment known as a Trust Mastery. 
Trust Mastery Gear isn't something which you craft. Each character has a unique Trust Mastery to offer, and it is unlocked when you completely awaken, and limit break, a unit. This gear still has a type, like weapon or armor, and still follows the same rule for equipment as before. So you cannot equip a weapon, alongside a Trust Mastery which is also a weapon. Besides that, the big deal about Trust Mastery gear is that you can customize them, utilizing a system called Trust Stones. That is an entirely different can of worms, however, and I will make a specific guide for that, soon. There is all sorts of equipment out there, such as weapons which are tailor-made for certain characters, as well as stuff that can be very valuable for tanks. You will acquire a nice collection of gear over time, as you play, so don't worry too much about it early on. I can hear you all thinking, well that all sounds well and good, but what about something my characters can equip, which can prove to be a real game changer? Good question, my children. Perhaps it is time for us to have the talk. Yes, I think it's time you all learned about vision cards. The characters might get all the attention, but vision cards are like the guy your imaginary girlfriend told you not to worry about. Each character can have access to a primary and secondary vision card slot, the latter of which is unlocked as your character gets to level 99. Let's take a look at one of these bad boys, and see what your imaginary girlfriend was so crazy about. Let's take things one at a time. The first things you see are the stats that the card has, which will go to the character equipping the card. Next, we can see a party ability. This is a boost that will apply to all members of your party, as long as they fulfill the required condition. Bestowed effects also go to the unit wearing the card, while limited bestowed effects only work if a particular character, such as lightning in this case, is wearing it. Vision cards don't just unlock your character's potential, but they also unlock the potential of your team. It is difficult to downplay the importance and usefulness of vision cards. It isn't easy to max them out, though. To get a UR vision card to max level, you need 275 shards. Once you do level up a UR card to level 99, you will feel pretty good. But also, you will unlock the card's final ability. Currently, most vision cards that you will come across tend to be made for specific elements, while having a few effects for specific units. Soon, we will also get vision cards for specific weapon types. You should definitely focus on acquiring and maxing out cards for the elements and units that you want to focus on. Now then, that leaves us with one slot that we haven't talked about yet. Gather around, children. Let's talk about Espers. Espers are like the other guy, that your girlfriend told you not to worry about. Espers provide significant stat bonuses, while also providing your character with a large variety of passive effects to choose from. The kind of Esper you equip on a character, can drastically change how that character would work. Espers can even alter a character's elemental effectiveness in a significant way. There are all sorts of Espers. Those which are designed for mages, other offensive units and those made for tanks. There are Espers that have very specific niches, such as being defensive against very specific elements and types of units, or ones that can be very effective against certain elements and units. Having a wide variety of espers at your disposal allows you to have a significant amount of flexibility in your team building options, and it's just a lot of fun to mess around with different combinations of units and espers. Espers also allow their users to use a unique, usually very strong skill during battle, which often gives positive effects to your entire party, and has the potential to change the tide in your favor. And perhaps most important of all, you can view them in 3D. Oh yes, how very sexy. Well then, now you should have a reasonable idea about units, equipment, vision cards and espers. Let's see how much of a difference all of this can make for our girl, Lightning. Hot damn. As you can see, the difference is remarkable. Well the video has gone on longer than I expected, so let us stop here for now, children. In the final part of this guide, 
we will look at what you can do with your powered up units, whether it be competitive PvP, or the PvE side of things. We'll also take a look at how banners work, and which ones to look out for, alongside guilds and a lot more. We might also take a look at some tips and tricks, including some must build units for new players, and how you can get your hands on some strong, free units. I'll try to make sure that part 3 comes out as soon as possible. I hope this has been helpful for all of you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Have a good day, take care of your organs, and may the light of the crystals guide you.